super shear earthquakes, deadly rare event earthquakes that give aftershock quake swarms. We recently had one, the Indonesia deadly 2018 earthquake, which appears to have been a rare super shear event. When an earthquake struck near the Indonesian island of Suwalesi on September 28 last year, 2018, thousands of people lost their lives, dragged out to sea, buried in the mud. They were the victims of 2018's most devastating earthquake. Satellite data has now revealed that the grinding sections of crust responsible for the 7.5 magnitude tremor unraveled at breakneck speeds. The velocity is startling for a fault of this nature, but it could help explain the power of such standout seismic events. Two recently published studies, 2018 tremor, provide strong evidence that the rupture behind the catastrophe, the catastrophe moved at what's described as a super shear velocity. San Andreas Fault in California is another super shear area. So is the Anatolia Fault in Turkey. And a, a couple of faults, of course, as we know, in uh, the Pacific Rim. Now, earthquakes all started somewhere. Mounting pressure between titanic pieces of crust can only build so far until weakness finally gives way into a planet-jarring, planet-jarring rupture that shifts along the fault, easing each plate into new positions. Can you imagine? Pulses of energy called shear waves spread out through the crust in all directions, felt as the jarring jingle of an earthquake. But the adjustment of the plates themselves propagates at a speed set by the friction of surrounding geology. That puts a limit on most ruptures of roughly three kilometers every second, slightly slower than the shear waves which typically move around four to eight kilometers per second. Super shear earthquakes buck this trend, shooting forwards at speed that overtake the ripples to create what's effectively a ground-shaking sonic boom. While not exactly common, they've been observed a handful of times in Regents history and are even thought to be behind the cataclysm that struck San Francisco in 1906. If the one that hit Indonesia last year was a super sheer quake, it would go a long way to explain its intensity. But there's just one problem. The fault line behind the quake is not what we'd expect of super shear structures. Sulawesi sits in the middle of a jigsaw puzzle of tectonic plates. The most active junction is the Palokoro Fault, comprising of plates that slide laterally against one another in opposite directions in a strike slip fashion. For strike slip ruptures to move at super shear velocities, the rupture should theoretically begin in a slightly rougher zone before building up speed down a smooth straight. Zigzags and structure complexities in the Palokuro Fault would make it hard to, for a rupture to build up much speed, so, or so it was thought. There were some early signs that in 2018 a quake was, the quake was a fast one. Aftershock data and satellite aftershocks, of course. After these huge quakes, we have uh, months and months of aftershocks, and they could be quite big. The data uh, and satellite imagery suggests it took just 35 seconds to jump a distance of about 93 miles along the fault. 35 seconds. So a team of researchers from the University of California, Los Angeles, used teleseismic data and remote sensing of the quake to come up with detailed imagery of the rupture process, getting a precise measurement of velocity of 2.5 miles each second. This rapid pace is not quite up, the, uh, up to the blazing velocities of other super shear quakes. quakes. The magnitude 7.5 tremor that hit Alaska early 2013 was believed to race down the fault at about 3.7 miles per second. But the Palo Kuro Fault is not typical. Its unique mess of shattered rocks left by a history of quakes could help explain why it didn't break any record speeds. A separate study by researchers from Université Savant Mont Blanc in France adds additional detail to the fault structure. Satellite imagery used to map the main rupture and secondary structures associated with slip. A picture emerged of a previously undescribed section of fault that was highly complex. And from there, the slip extended to a total distance of 120 kilometers, 112 miles, pushing through two major kinks and then down 
19 miles straight past the Sulawesi capital of Palu. This relatively short, extremely smooth strait appears to be the culprit for the quake's super sheer jump. It caused it to blast off at top speeds rather than taking a run-up. Even in this complicated and rough fault, it can go to super sheer and it can go super sheer right away. That's what the UCLA seismologist Lingen Meng told Paul Rusin of Science Magazine. So whether a catastrophe of this magnitude will repeat in the Sulawesi's future is no anybody's guess. While the tsunami appears to have been a bad case, bad luck, seismologists have a long way to go before they can actually predict the size of earthquakes. Knowing that sonic boom tremors like these could all occur at faults such as Paolo Kuro could at least help identify the potential for disasters more accurately in the future. Well, the thing is, sonic booms, you know, right, by the time you get the boom, the earthquake is there anyway. So this was on science alert. But um, now going to the, what is the super shear earthquake? In which the, it propagates a rupture along the fault surface occurring at speeds in excess of seismic shear wave, S wave velocity, it causes an, an effect analogous to a sonic boom. The sonic boom travels at 1.4 times the speed of sound, that's Mach 1.4. Since the source is moving faster than the sound waves, it creates and leads the advancing wave front. That's the sonic boom is 1.4 the speed of sound. So that's uh, analogous to the to uh, the speed the sonic boom is what the super shear earthquake is rupture propagation velocity during seismic events along a fault surface of displaced initiates focus then propagates outward typically for large earthquakes they're usually large uh, over 7 7.5 and uh, the focus lies towards one end of the slip surface and uh, much of the propagation is undirectional the 2008 Sichuan and 2004 Indian Ocean quakes are uh, sheer, super sheer quakes. Theoretical studies in the past suggest that the upper bound for propagation velocity is Rayleigh waves, about 0.92 of the shear wave velocity. But evidence of propagation at velocities between S wave and compressional waves have been reported for several earthquakes in agreement with theoretical and laboratory studies to that support the possibility of rupture propagation in this range. The occurrence of them. Evidence of rupture propagation, velocities greater than S wave, expected surrounding crusts have been observed for several large earthquakes associated with strip, strike slip faults, uh, and this contrasts with the dip slip rupture. The initiation of super shear ruptures the velocity range those of Rayleigh waves and shear waves remains forbidden for a mode 2 crack. This means that the rupture cannot accelerate from Rayleigh waves speed to shear wave speed. And this is a little bit analytical, but uh, I'll leave a link below for you on Wikipedia and you can get the, the more details on that. Geological effects. The high rates of this strain expected near faults that are affected by super shear propagation are thought to generate what is described as pulverized rocks. The pulverization involves the development of many small micro cracks at a scale smaller than the grain size of a rock, while preserving the earlier fabric quite distinct from the normal breakation and cataclysis found in most fault zones. And such rocks have been reported up to 400 miles away from the large strike slip fault, such as the San Andreas Fault. The link between super shear and the occurrence of pulverized rock is supported by laboratory experiments that show very high strain rates are necessary to cause such intense, very bad structuring, fra fracturing. And we had the Izmit earthquake 1999, that was a super shear earthquake of a magnitude 7.6. And it was on the North Anatolian Fault. In a, a week later, we had, a couple of weeks later, we had the big earthquake in Athens. Um, then you had the Dews earthquake again in 1999, with 7.2 uh, again North Anatolia Fault. And you had uh, ongoing 2001. You had a 
7.8 magnitude, 2002, 7.9, 2010, you had a 6.9, and uh, Indian Ocean, 2012, 8.6 magnitude, a 7.6 magnitude, Craig earthquake in uh, 2013, you had a huge uh, 6.9 in the GNC, 2014, you had the uh, Tajikistan earthquake of a 7.2 in 2015, and the Sulawesi, this is the one we really analyzed, 2018, of 7.5 magnitude. And now, the 1906 San Francisco earthquake was a 7.8. It was a strike-slip movement on the San Andreas Fault. The Imperial Valley earthquake, 1979, magnitude 6.4, with slip on the Imperial Fault. And 2013, Okosi earthquake, 6.7 uh, aftershock was the an extremely deep 400 mile super shear as well as unusually fast at 8 kilometers per second that's 5 miles per second nearly 50 percent faster than shear wave velocity at that depth that's amazing so yeah and the, the we have to remember that these travel very fast very long distances um uh, many times you get a sonic boom and also we have months and months of aftershocks and the aftershocks of course are can be deadly as well because you know these sheer uh, super sheer earthquakes are huge to begin with so I'll leave links below for you for this If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.